I mean, I, I, I love I love writing. I always have. I, I, I'm, I wrote some terrible poetry when I was 17, and some not so terrible poetry, but mainly bad. And um, and but nowadays I kind of try and uh, like to write scripts because I want to direct at some point, and the way I see it, it's probably going to be much easier to con to just direct something that I've written rather than convince somebody else to give me their script to do. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm so happy. I'm doing a play here and it's nice to be home. I've lived in the States for the last 10 years, but I come back and forth and now I'm here for five months with my family and it's, uh, it's beautiful. I'm so happy to be a part of the BFI with the movie. So. I think actually Alan, in many ways, ended up the happiest of all of the beats. I mean, I don't, you can't speak about how happy someone is or isn't, but, you know, I do think that, um, you know, more than Burroughs and more than Kerouac, who had really tortured adulthood as well, Alan really seemed to find more and more freedom as, as he got older. Actually, no, funny enough, like that's the, one of the reasons we did the film. Even though he was a new director, which a lot of the time that's a risk, you meet John Kukidis, who's the director, and you just believe that he had it inside of him. The moment you met him, he was just infectious. You said, oh, you, not only did he write the movie, like co writer with Austin Bunn, but like he just had this aura about him that you said, oh, wow, you're going to take this and you're going to run with it and you're going to make something special. And I feel like you have to sort of put yourself in someone's hands as a director in that sense. Um, and with John, you really didn't question it. And he made you feel very comfortable and very confident, and he really gave everyone like their own sort of freedom, like their artistic license to do what they wanted, but he was very nurturing and made the movie for us, really. I mean, it was John, it's John's creation, this movie, it's amazing. Filming it, yeah, no, it was such a wonderful experience. We do, it's very, like, but that's what's lovely about all these events, is that, you know, you get to meet up with Dane and John again, and, you know, it's sort of, it is a big reunion. It's always a big responsibility, but luckily, as I was saying before, it's, um, it wasn't them who we know at 40 years old or 30 years old, you know, that. it was them as kids, they were at university, they hadn't had anything published, they weren't the Beats yet, they were kids, they were trying to find their voice, um, so we don't have any footage of them at this time, we don't have anything to reference them at this time, so we have the artistic license to make it our own, and that's what I did with the character. Well, you know, it, it's a time when there were still a lot of rules to be broken, and there were still a lot of things that needed to change with society and the world. There still are, but um, but you know, I, th I think that's the exciting thing uh, time about that period is that it seems like all the values of a country were were up for questioning and debate, and that's uh, that's always a good thing. Tell me, what would you say if someone like J.J. Abrams asked you to be in the Star Wars movies? Yes. No. <laughs> um, I don't know. It depends it depend what, what the part was. Um, but I always think those movies are fantastic. Um, and he's got amazing actors to do it. So, like I say, you never say no to something just to say no. You have to sort of have a basis for saying no. And you've got to do things for the reason for doing them. There's normally a passion for the project, for the director, for the script, whatever it is. You've got to come up with a reason. You can't just do something for something like money or something like that. But um, with a movie like that, I think they're incredible. They're beautiful films. So. If J.J. Abrahams comes knocking, I'd be like, all right, J.J., how are you? I'll come do it.